whenever there's a new disruptive technology, it always takes a while for all of us to figure out how that needs to change the way we do things. And this is not a new problem, by the way. If you think about the great innovations that we've gone through, I mean, forget about social media and mobile phones. Probably the greatest innovation we saw in the last hundred years was electricity, right? And if electricity had its iPod moment, it was in 1831, when the British scientist Michael Faraday invented the electric dynamo. Now, this should have been the moment that unleashed a tsunami of transformation across every industry. It took a little longer than we expected. How long do you think it took for electricity to transform fundamental business processes? What do you think, five years, 10 years? Pretty close. Try 82 years before somebody, in this case, Henry Ford came along and said, okay, so this electricity idea, it's been around for a while. Uh, what if we could not only power our factories in a different way, what if we could design them differently too? You see, before he came up with this idea, which was essentially the moving assembly line, an early form of automation, they would just go to a, sort of an existing factory, take out the steam engine, put an electric engine in. They'd leave the whole infrastructure that had been around since the early industrial revolution, of you know, drive shafts and heavy machinery. That kind of more agile, adaptive manufacturing process, it took them almost a century to figure out that that was the real opportunity from electricity. Do you know what? We're not gonna have 100 years this time. So if we can't very quickly figure out how we build on what we've learnt and how we look at how data, automation, artificial intelligence, algorithms can really transform the nature of what we do, we're, we're in serious trouble. And that's why I say remote work is not the real story here. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's not where we work that's changing, it's how.